Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's daily chess test I'm going to show you a position from the first game in a match I've started just today against the FIDE Master. You're playing a 10 game match and yeah, the position you can see on the screen uh, is from the game we played this morning. The second position is a bit harder than this and it's going to be a very very nice practical end game. Uh, okay, uh, without much talk let's get into the positions. Uh, take your time, uh, 15 minutes per position, time yourself, uh, set up the positions of a real board and don't move the pieces. Okay, uh, pause the video, see you in a minute guys, good luck with this one. Okay, so just to give you a brief bit of context for this position, this is what happened. Uh, I'll just take you from here to the position we had on the screen. So here my opponent played e4 and I played c4. Now, if this pawn is taken, then black takes on e4. If the pawn is not taken, then the bishop has to retreat. And my whole idea behind this was to eventually play b3, c3 and get a very dangerous pawn on b2, which is what happened. Uh, here I have a couple of options, but I played rook f to c8, which I think is okay. My opponent played bishop g5. In hindsight, h6 seems like a very good move here i'm sorry about the background noise there seems to be i don't even know what this is let me just close the windows excuse me yeah so, sorry about that uh somebody is doing something weird outside okay uh, so uh, in this position black should play h6 and later on you're going to see why uh, but le let me get you back to the position uh, so since i played rook f to c8 my opponent played bishop g5 i continued with my plan of playing b3 the bishop only has one square now i play c3 white again only has one move has to take queen takes and now again white has only one move bishop to d3 the problem is now that black has only one move, because white is now threatening rook to c1, so I have to play b2, rook a to b1, bishop to a3 is forced, and now taking on f6 for white is not good, uh, the best is what my opponent played in the game, bishop to d2. And we reach the position you had on the screen. In this position I went badly wrong, uh, there are a couple of options for black. I'd underestimated my opponent's resources in this position and I didn't understand the position fully. I think this is probably, even though it's not too hard, the most instructive position you had so far. So, first of all, I'm going to show you what happened in the game. Uh, in the game, I played queen to c7. The reason why I played queen to c7 is to keep pressure on a5. To keep pressure on the c file and to defend f7. The reason why I wanted to defend f7 is because of course my opponent can now play e5 which is what happened in the game. Here's what I'd missed. Uh, e5 was played in the game and originally I thought well I play bishop f3, queen f3, knight d5 to make sure there are no bishop h7 Greek gifts. The problem is here that, that bishop h7 just works and once the a3 bishop falls, then the b2 pawn falls with it. So against e5, I cannot play bishop takes f3. I have to play knight to d5. And now bishop takes h7. And it's a Greek gift, but it's not a standard Greek gift. If I take the bishop, he doesn't play knight g5 because that simply loses. He plays queen to d3, picks up the bishop, then picks up the pawn. So I couldn't do that. So after bishop takes h7, let me just show you why the Greek gift doesn't work. If something like this happens, I can just play rook a to b8, if queen h7, king f8, queen h8, king here, takes, takes, and here, and I'm perfectly fine, white is completely lost. However, after bishop takes h7, if I take, as I said, queen d3. So I played king f8 in the game. And my opponent made a mistake here, which I didn't use. The correct way to play was just knight g5, and this is plus a million. I, I have to resign. 
If I go knight c3, which is the obvious move, then bishop c3, queen c3, queen h5, and I have to play rook c7 or queen c7, and now simply bishop to g6. My position is falling apart. Uh, I'm, I'm going to lose in a couple of moves. Instead of that, he played bishop to e4, which still gave me a chance to hold. And I saw this move, but I didn't think it was good. Queen to c4. I thought bishop d3 and white just wins. But I have queen c6 now. And knight g5 is simply not possible because of mating threats or threatening to trade the queens. Okay, so let's let's get back to the position. So I played queen c7, which for the mentioned reasons doesn't work. There are actually two good moves here. One move which I discarded straight away was queen to c6. I was afraid of queen to c6 because of e5. And I cannot take on f3. I couldn't see what to do. I just simply missed knight e4. But knight e4 is fine. So against queen c6, e5 would be a bad move. Black is better here. But against queen c6, white has this amazing bishop to b4. And after takes, which is forced, queen takes b2. I have to play something like queen c3, queen takes b4, queen takes b4, rook takes b4, bishop takes e4, and this should be equal. So queen c6 is in fact an okay move, which I didn't see. But the best move, which hopefully you'd found, is queen to b3. And the idea behind queen to b3 is that you are defending your bishop, therefore bishop h7 is not possible. We already know that the standard Greek gift patterns don't work here. So if we look at e5, knight d5, bishop h7, king h7, of course queen d3 is now not possible. If he tries knight g5, then again the same variation. You can just play rook to c7 in this position, queen h7 here. Uh, here, 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 and rook f8, and again, white is just busted. So against queen b3, e5 doesn't work. My opponent would have to play knight e5. And in this position, queen a4 is a very, very nice move. I, of course, didn't see this during the game because I I'd discarded queen to b3. Uh, in this position, bishop g5 should be played, queen takes d4. This is an engine line. Uh, knight to c4 and attacks the bishop, so we have to grab uh, the knight. Bishop takes c4, queen takes e4, queen takes e4, bishop takes e4, and this again should be equal. Probably black gets the exchange straight away uh, with bishop to a2, but yeah, definitely no issues. And yeah, since I played queen c7, I lost the game. Uh, this is a very very bad move. Uh, one thing I thought my opponent was going to play, I didn't expect e5, I was expecting knight e5, threatening knight c4, which seemed very very good, but there's this move queen to d6, which I discovered during analysis, and against knight c4 you just take it, and bishop c4, and bishop e4. And this again should be equal, hard but equal. So yeah, uh, a very very complex position with a lot of intricacy and unfortunately for me well he's a fide master so i mean he sees more than i see but unfortunately i didn't see some pretty obvious things okay now second position uh this is hard take your time uh again please write your analysis down uh and and see you see you after you solve it pause the video see you in a minute Okay, uh, this position is actually from a real game. I took a picture of this position when I was looking at it for the first time, but I didn't write down the name of the players. This is from a real game. And let's go through some obvious moves. Uh, in the game, rook to e8 was played, which seems like a very nice move. Unfortunately, it leads to a draw. It seems that white is threatening to queen, so black has to take, and white simply plays rook e7 check, and it's game over. Because if takes takes, this is an easily winning pawn end game. However, black has this move king h8, and if you take the rook, it's stalemate. So this is a draw, and it's an easy draw. So the most obvious variation with rook e8 
doesn't work. Hopefully you glanced at it and discarded it. If you didn't see it, that's not good. If you saw it and thought it works, it's not good either. So, okay. Now, so by process of elimination, if moving the rook doesn't work, because if you move it anywhere else, then like simply takes the pawn. I, I had some ideas of doing this and mating, but that's too slow. Uh, so that doesn't work either. Moving the rook simply doesn't work. So by a process of elimination, we come to a conclusion that it's a king move. We have to start with a king move. So th there are three moves, king f7, king e7, king e8. King e7 and king e8 both draw easily. Uh, the reason is, if you play king e7, I just go king g7. And now you don't have any way to make progress. If you start marching towards my pawn, I'm just going to check you forever. This is a very, very simple mechanism which if you don't know just take uh, 100 endgames you must know or any simple endgame book and you will you will see this and if not uh, king e7 but king e8 then king to g8 again following the king and no problems again if you if you play something like king d7 check then king to g7 if you move back i go back if you go towards my pawn i just keep checking you and it's a it's an, a perpetual check so, the correct way to play this is king to f7, incredibly. And after king to f7, black is forced to play rook to a6. And because otherwise he loses the second pawn and it's, it's just a winning endgame. But once black plays rook a6, there's a problem in his position. He can no longer give you checks from the second rank. So black has actually lost the tempo defending his pawn. And now you can play king e7 or king e8 doesn't really matter both win so let's say king to e7 and now if you play king g7 for black which is the most obvious move again uh trying to get closer to the pawn now black is not in time you go king d8 or king d7 and if the rook tries to go back to to check you i'll show you what happens if the king just drops back then you simply play king to c7 and again he is not in time, you're going to play king b7 and queen your pawn. If he goes back, rook a1, now you can play rook to c8 because it's not stalemate. And now again, the pawn has to be taken. Rook takes a7 and rook to c7 check takes, takes. And again, a winning pawn end game. This I hope you know that it's winning. So king d6, king to f7, king to d7, king to f8, king to e6 king to g7, king to e7, and, and winning. Whatever black does, you're going to win this position. So I thought this was incredibly instructive. Imagine having this in the game and messing it up. I mean, well, of course, it could happen to anybody, but hopefully with this, you did manage to broaden your uh, endgame horizons uh, a bit. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you got something from this video. Let me know what you think about the positions. I'm going to try and include more positions from my own games, especially from the match which I'm, I'm playing now. And yeah, thanks again. Uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye.